I want to honor um, your pastor and the visionary of this house. Amen. He, he, I know he's a man of faith because he has never heard me preach. And here I am on a Sunday and I'm hoping at the end of today he doesn't say I've never heard her preach. <laughs> but I'm here to lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the wife that stands beside pastor, pray for him, intercede, do her role. I also want to thank God for her. Come on, put your hands together for the family. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I want to thank um, the leaders and all the members of this church. We give God thanks for you. That despite what is going on in the world, we are here to lift up the name of the Lord our God. Amen. We are here to praise him. We are here to worship him. We are here to give him all the honor that is due unto his name. Amen. Amen. I've been so moved by everything that has happened here today. Amen. The testimony of your brother. Amen. Oh, we give God thanks. Amen. There is such rejoicing in heaven of a soul that comes to the Lord. Amen. And it is just the beginning. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I can see a familiar face over there as well. God bless you, man. It's good to see you. Raise your hand. You know who I'm talking. She's looking round. She's looking round. Right over there. You know the lady in front. Yes? The lady that's right beside the lady that did the poem. Right beside the lady that did the poem. She's, she's thinking she doesn't recognize me, but I recognize you. Amen. I recognize you from all the way in Jamaica. I recognize her. Amen. Okay, I must adjust my glasses. Oh yes, oh yes, I do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God thanks. Amen. 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 I traveled down this morning from Hampshire and I thank God I'm here safely. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, without further ado, we're going to go into the word. Your, 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 your theme for the month, pursuit of excellence. What a wonderful theme. And I believe that God is showing me something that he wants me to share um, from the scripture that he has given me. So today we're going to look at John 2 and we're going to read from 1 on to 11. Many of you will be familiar with that passage of scripture and, and pastor will tell you that it it's, you're always nervous when you're delivering a word from a familiar passage of scripture. <laughs> Amen. But I know that you will be blessed. I've spent time with the Lord. I've consulted the Lord. And I believe that he has something in this passage of scripture that he wants to share with you. Amen. 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 So I don't know if it's customary, but let, let us stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. And I will read in your hearing. And the word of the Lord says, And on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. <laughs> and he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto 
unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. And the beginning, this beginning of miracles, did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Do we have an amen to the reading of God's holy word? Hallelujah. Lord, you brought me one woman. You brought all the way up the motorway to come here to deliver a word. Holy Spirit of God, I invite you right now in the midst of us. Two or three are gathered. You say you are in the midst of us. Move up and down every aisle. Move in me. Move through me. Hallelujah. Let your presence be made manifest. Our gathering is in vain if your presence is not in the midst of us. We call of us. Let your glory be felt and be seen in the midst of us. Holy Spirit, I need you right now. Draw alongside me. Let your people hear what you have to say. Let there be none of me and all of you, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now when I look at this passage of scripture, I often wonder to myself, why is it that the first miracle that Jesus did was at a party? <laughs> it was at a marriage. It was at a wedding. And the more I looked at this passage of scripture, I began to realize that there is revelation in the passage of scripture. I begin to realize that there is prophecy for the church today in this passage of scripture. When I think of three, the Bible makes it known, and there are no coincidences coincidences in the Bible. When the Bible said it was on the third day and I started thinking about three and I started thinking about the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I started thinking in 1 John 5, 7 and 8. He says there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit. And he says that there are three that bear witness in the earth. He said it's the Spirit, the water and the blood. In, in, in in John 2 and verse 19 he said you can destroy this temple but he said in three days I will raise it up hallelujah he said in Mark 8 and verse 21 and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and being rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and he said but he will be killed and after three days he says I will rise up again there is something in this turning water into wine that I believe that God is communicating to his church. Hallelujah. In the testimony against Jesus, they testified and they said, we heard him say that I will destroy this temple made of hands and within three days I will build up another without hands. There is revelation in what God is saying in this scripture. Hallelujah. And I recall also the men that Thief, the, the, amongst thief on the way to Jericho, the priest came and left. Hallelujah. The Levi came and left. But the good Samaritan, the third man, attended to him. And when he took him to the inn, he said, if there is any debt, he said, I will pay on my return. There is a revelation in the scripture that God is communicating to the church. Hallelujah. 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 Even Peter, Peter on the day of Pentecost he said we are not drunken as you suppose seeing it's only the third hour of the day there is something about three that is relevant to this scripture there is something about three 
that is relevant to the church. Hallelujah. It is important to God and it is important in this passage of scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. We go on to verse 3 and, and, and verse 2 and it says, And both Jesus and his disciples were at the wedding. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said, they have no wine. And that's the passage of my scripture today. That's the title of my subject today. They have no wine. And when I think about that, you know, it reminds me of Galatians 3 and verse 3. When Paul was saying to the Galatians church, he said, you started out this in the spirit and now you're being made, you think you're being made perfect in the flesh. How foolish Galatians. Hallelujah. When I look at this wedding, I realize that they started out with wine and then they ran out of wine. And the mother of Jesus said, they have no wine. Hallelujah. But you see, one of the things I realize that when we are talking about wine, Jesus in Luke 22 described his blood as the fruit of the vine. Yes. He described his blood as the fruit of the vine. When we take communion, we take the wine and we take the bread. The wine representing the blood of Jesus and the bread being the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the wine and he's the winemaker. And Mary went to him and said, we have no wine. You see, in this instance, the wine is the blood of Jesus. We look also at Mark 2 and verse 22. Now this is was Jesus. He was excusing his disciples from fasting because he said, I am here. Why do you need to fast? Hallelujah. But he says, a day is coming when I will no longer be here and you will fast. Hallelujah. Then he went on to explain that you can't put new wine into old wineskins. And I wondered to myself, what is he talking about? And as I continue to meditate on this passage of scripture, I come to realize that the wine is also the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The wine is the Holy Ghost. And pastor, we're beginning to see, all you're going to do is look at some of these God channels and we're beginning to see people preaching the gospel and we don't hear about the blood and we don't hear about the Holy Ghost. But Jesus is saying, I'm married to my church and my church cannot be excellent without the blood of Jesus and without the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 We need the blood. We need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We cannot function without the blood of Jesus. And we cannot function without the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's why when Nicodemus went to Jesus at night, Jesus had to say to him, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You are the master. Hallelujah. In Israel. And you don't know the scripture. You don't understand that you can't operate at this level. To go to another level of excellence, you must be born again. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We give you thanks, Lord. So the the, the, the marriage in Cana is like unto the modern day church. Many churches have no wine. They ran out of wine. (laughs) Hallelujah. We can't be perfect in the church. We cannot be perfected without the blood and without the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. No blood. Hallelujah. There's a cry. There's a crying in the wilderness. There's a crying in the in the world. There's a crying for the blood of Jesus. There's a crying for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings power. The Holy Spirit brings healing. Jesus came, he caused such controversy. He went into 
to the church, the woman that was bowed down for 18 years and could no wise lift herself up. He said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity because the spirit of the living God Destroy. 
drinking Jesus Christ than hang on a cross for me to have a good time. I'm thinking, where is the blood? And I'm thinking, where is the Holy Spirit? If all we've got in church is entertainment. If we're going to go to another level, the excellency of the Father is the excellency of God. The excellency of God is the Word of God and the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when church becomes business as usual, maybe somebody ought to ask, have we got any wine? Maybe it's a question. Hallelujah. When I look at the disciples and how they died and those who followed Jesus and when I look at Peter and they nailed Peter to a cross and Peter said, turn me over. I'm not worthy to die as my Lord. That tells me that Peter was full of wine. He was full of the power of the Holy Ghost. prison knowing that the next day he was going to be beheaded and he asked for paper let me write another revelation let me write another epistle my God that power of the Holy Ghost and the word and the word of God Hallelujah. I've seen people in church and somebody new come to the church and my God if you make a mistake and sit them in that, that, that person's seat they will tear up the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's a sign that they got no wine. <laughs> it's a very good sign. When you see temper tantrums in the church, it's a sign that they got no wine. When they're in leadership and they decide I'm coming to church today, it's a sign that they got no wine. When they're supposed to lead, when they're supposed to usher, when they're supposed to work on the work of the Lord, not yet come. This is not Corona. This is sweat. Amen. If you catch this, this is Holy Ghost sweat. Hey, this is all right. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, my hour has not yet come. And the book of Ecclesiastic tells me that my times and seasons are in the hand of God. Amen. Like the Samaritan woman that was called she worshipped him and because she worshipped him she got her breakthrough in this case the mother of Jesus went to Jesus and said they have no wine and it was a sign of worship because she went to the winemaker knowing he had the capacity to make wine you see many times we we go to man <laughs> when we ought to go to God <laughs> every solution to every problem that I got sometimes you run to a prayer partner and I'm saying don't do that we run to the doctor and I'm not saying don't do that we run to the bank and I'm not saying don't do that but when I run to the father when I run to the throne of God hallelujah I get one solution and that solution will work
to God. Hallelujah. And what I realized is that even though the woman that was called a dog, even though her time had not yet come, and even though Jesus said to Mary, my time had not yet come, as long as there's a need, and you worship and you praise him, he will stop time for you. He will speed up time for you. He will break protocols for you. He will open doors for you. He will shut doors. Solution and Mary did intercession. 
question. You can't look at the congregation and say, I ain't gonna preach today. You can't look at the congregation and say, I ain't gonna sing with all my heart unto God today because we're serving God. We're not serving God. Hallelujah. And so we have to be consistent. Whether it rains, whether it's sunny, whether it's sleet, whether it's rain, you, gave you, 
He's the multiplier of it. But you will never know it if you don't use it. They kept carrying water, carrying water. Keep coming, keep going. Just do it. They were obedient. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And so they filled up the water pots. The Bible says to the brim. And the same servants who fill it to the brim. In verse 8, he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. Yes. You see, one of the challenges that we also have is that we want to make a withdrawal where we haven't made a deposit. <laughs> if you go to the bank, that's called an overdraft. <laughs> and you pay <laughs> for the overdraft. <laughs> <laughs> but here we see they threw it out and the ones that worked the work were the ones that drew from their work because obedience is always better than sacrifice and the ones that come to church and faithfully Sunday in, Sunday out Sunday in, Sunday out help to build the body of Christ help to build the house of God they are the first partakers of the miracles in the house. So, what did you put into the building of his house? <laughs> What's the contribution? Are you expecting to make a withdrawal when you did not? Make a deposit. <laughs> you see, you see, when I when I look at this, it reminds me, and we don't probably don't hear a lot of it as much as we should, that judgment day is coming. And God is gonna ask, what did you do with what I gave you?
and our little emotions. Oh, the crowds ain't here. We ain't gonna do it the way we used to. Hey, all our flesh gets in the way. Hallelujah. It says the serpent knew. And he says, and the governor called the bridegroom. Now, my question is, when did the water turn to wine? <laughs> Could it be that it turned to wine when they let down the bucket into the well to get the water? Could it be when they were pouring from the buckets into the water pots? Could it be when they were drawing it out of the water pots? Could it be when they were carrying it to the master of the feast? Could it be when the master tasted it? When did the water turn to wine? Just a question. I haven't got the answer, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't there. I don't know. But all I know is that a miracle occurred. I don't know how it happened, when it happened. But I know servanthood in the house of the God opens up a door for miracles in the house of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. You see, we don't know when God is going to turn up. reminded me when the ruler tasted the wine as I said we don't know when the water turned to wine and it kind of reminded me of the disciples in the upper room that suddenly there was a shout suddenly there was fire suddenly there were tongues of fire suddenly something happened in the house of God See what this taught me is keep keep serving. As sure as day follows night, I will suddenly will come. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't a big enough amen. I said, as sure as day follows night, I will suddenly will come. Yeah. 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 And the servants kept serving. Hallelujah. And they took it to the governor of the feast and he said unto them he says every man at the beginning does set forth good wine and when men are drunk <laughs> that which is worse <laughs> but it says but thou has kept the good wine until now you see the God that we serve he's a God of the divine reversal <laughs> hallelujah Hallelujah. When we think he's not going to do it, that's when he steps in and do it. And so I keep telling myself, Rose, you better keep praying. You better keep singing. You better keep worshiping. You better keep adoring because you don't know when God is going to do it. But as long as he sits upon the throne, I know this, that God is faithful and God will do it. Until now, and I come to realize that we haven't seen the best yet, that the best is yet to come. I haven't preached my best no. <laughs> message yet, the best is yet to come. There is an outpouring of God in the house of God where the best is yet to come. Creative miracles are yet to come.
And so being aware of the time, I'm, bringing, I'm coming to a close. <laughs> Hallelujah. What I loved about verse 11, it says, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. So what that told me is even the disciples that Jesus picked by hand they were busy following Jesus but they were not believers.
Come on, put your hands together as she comes. 